welcome. Thank you for choosing to listen to this spirit-filled word by David Entry. When you catch a word, you have caught God. May you catch a word today that will cause God to change your story. Be blessed. First Peter chapter 5 from verse 6 all the way to verse 12. It says, humble yourself, therefore, yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, that devil, as a roaring lion, walks about seeking whom he may devour, whom resists steadfast, in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. But the God of all grace, who has called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that he have suffered a, a while, when a, a while, make you perfect, established, strengthen, settle you. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. By Silvanus, a faithful brother, unto you, as I suppose, I have written briefly, exhorting and testifying that this is the true grace of God wherein he stands. Here ends the reading of his holy word. Amen. Amen. This is so loaded. God is one of the Hebrew names for God is El Shaddai. Okay. El Shaddai. So God, El Shaddai means the some trans some people translate it as the all sufficient God. Some people translate it as um, the Almighty God, because they believe that there is a certain mountain in the regions of Palestine which is tall and it's like it's Shaddai. So God is high, the Almighty. So sometimes it's translated Almighty, other times it's translated All Sufficient. In other words, He's actually all that He can be. So when we say God is El Shaddai, we mean he is whatever you need him to be. So if you need him to be a God of forgiveness, he is. And he has more forgiveness than you can take. If you need him to provide for you, he is. And he has more provision than you can take. If you need him to provide for your daily upkeep, he is more. Whatever you need him to be, he is. So when he sent Moses, is Moses said, when I go, in Exodus chapter 3, he said, who should I say sent me? He said, just tell them I am. So when you, when you hear that phrase, Jehovah, is Yahweh. It's a German theologian who translated it as Jehovah. Because, you know, the Germans, the V is W and W is something like that, V. So it's actually Yahweh. The Greeks pronounce it Yahweh. It's Y-H-W-H. Yahweh. 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 Which is J, German. Your Y is J, Jehovah. So for instance, when we say Joshua in the Hebrew, is actually Yeshua, not Joshua. Okay. And so when we say Jacob in the Hebrew is Yaakov. Yaakov is not so Abraham, Abraham. So the pronunciations are a bit slightly different. So Yahweh is what they translated as Jehovah. And when you read the Bible in the beginning, Genesis chapter 1, in the beginning, God, the Hebrew word translated God is Elohim. And short form of Elohim is El. So when it, someone is called Ella, Emmanuel, it's El, it's God's name. So that's why Emmanuel is 
God with us. L is well. <laughs> God is well. So any, in the Hebrew, anything you see, L, Jeru, Zerubbabel, and all the L, L is God inside. Like the way in, in Nigeria, I'm not in Nigerian, okay? But I'm forcing myself to be one. <laughs> in Yoruba particularly, when people say somebody's name is Olu something, Oluwa, Oluwa Tobi. What's the meaning of Oluwa Tobi? God is big. Oluwa Sheu. Everything is Oluwa. You know, the names are... So I'm looking for my own Oluwa something. <laughs> so so uh, when you see the Oluwa and all that, it's trying to say God is something. God is something. God is something. And so L, L, L is God in their name. So some names are very significant. And some tribes are in, in the West. We just name people. So you see the puppet is nice. And so um, uh, altar puppet, then you call your name altar pot. Altar, you call your child's name altar pit, altar pit. I mean, come on, they do that. And meaninglessness. So some of us carry names that are meaningless. <laughs> but... At least, David has a meaning. David means the one who is loved. Don't you love me? Yeah. My name is just working. You don't know. It's working on you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. David means the one who is loved, the beloved. That's the same, simple. And I love that name. And I won't change it because who doesn't like to be liked? God likes me. You like me. My children like me. My wife likes me. <laughs> but the devil doesn't like me and that's okay. So L, so in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning, uh, 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 Elohim, all right, Elohim. And then, then Genesis chapter 2, it talks about how God created heavens and the earth. Now, the word translated, in Genesis chapter 2, you see, you, you, only, you will not see, that's the heaven and the earth. Um, from verse 2, go to the verse 2, let me show you something. Uh, and on the seventh day, God, God ended. Uh, now, this God is different from, when I say different, the word translated God here is different from the word translated God in chapter 1, verse 1. The word translated God here is Yahweh. Now, he's a God who relates with people. So here, you see, that is when he started talking about God said to Adam, the God's relationship with people. He has a name, that's Yahweh. So when he said, Moses said, who did I say sent me? Tell them, Yahweh. I am the God, I am the almighty God, but yet I am with people. Now, so El Shaddai is the God that relates with us. So they, sometimes they co combine two. So anytime you see uh, the, um, the Lord God is combining Oh, his name is the, um, the Jehovah Lord God. I forgot. Yeah, I think the, the God Lord God, something like Jehovah Lord God. It's all the three names, the El, El, and then the, so we try, Jehovah El Shaddai. God, the one who is with us, is, provide, is a provider. Now, why did I bring El Shaddai? I just want you to know that when you talk about God is El Shaddai, it means he's the heavily breasted one. Now I explain it. It doesn't mean he has big breasts. It just <laughs> it, it means that God is heavily breasted. When a nursing mother is heavily breasted, do you understand what that means? What does that mean? Full of milk. For what? So when we start a, 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 a mother, nursing mother is heavy, um, heavily breasted, that means that she, she, she has to breastfeed. Or express the, the milk must come. The, when my younger sister was born years ago, my mom sometimes would be in town and she would rush and come home. She said, My baby's hungry. How do you know? He said, I know. I feel it in my breast. It's so heavy. It, it, so the breast has been programmed kind of to meet the needs of the child. So when it's heavy, the mom knows that it's time for me to feed, breastfeed my child. Now, so a heavy breasted, heavily breasted woman is actually more interested in breastfeeding than the child is even interested in taking. It's, and God, El Shaddai means heavily breasted one. He's so eager to give. 
Oh, I'm talking to somebody. God is so ready, eager to give to you than you are willing to take from him. Most of us don't understand grace. When we say grace, it means that El Shaddai, the provider, he actually wants to make himself available to you. He wants to do for you more than you are well ready to take from him. That's the grace of God. And God is the God of all grace. Ah, that means there are different types of grace. Certainly, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 10. We just read it. It's, it starts with, and the God of all grace. You know, it takes a certain type of grace to be born again. By grace are you saved. And it takes a certain type of grace to do what I'm doing. It takes another type of grace to be able to do the things you are supposed to do well. And it takes a certain, a certain type of grace to go through all kinds of pressures and still are okay. You are going through. Are, God is helping you. It's a grace. How many of you know it takes some grace to overcome some temptation? Yeah, yeah you need grace. The way you are struggling with pornography. Yeah, that porn thing must leave you. In the name of Jesus! The amen has become suddenly very weak. <laughs> Don't get close to anybody, but look at the person. Tell the person, I think God is talking to you. <laughs> but the good news is God is the God of all grace. In fact, in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 2, it talks about how the, it says that elected according to the foreknowledge of God the Father in, in sanctification of the Spirit for obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Christ Jesus. Grace to you. Grace is coming to talk to you. He said, Grace, receive, receive grace first. Because you need grace. Then in chapter 4, verse 10, he says that anyone who is ministering, like a ministry, do it according to the grace that, ah, really? He said, each one has received, as each one has received, uh, received a gift. Minister it one to another as a good steward of the manifold. So what I'm doing is stewardship of grace. Now watch this. Do you know who a steward is? A steward, uh, uh, like flight attendant or a steward is, or something. A steward is, you have a possess, something in your possession that doesn't belong to you. So, I give this to him, and then he's supposed to give it to him, and then he keeps it. Or he gets to T, and he says, no, no, you have to bring something before I give it to you. No, it's not for you. You are just a steward. And everyone who can do singing here, leading prayer here, uh, or spoken word, anything in church, Ashlyn, you are just a steward of God's grace. Make yourself more important than you are because you are not. Yes, sir. Don't think I'm that important. I'm not. It's just, I'm, can you imagine? Where is David Cameron? Why don't we hear about him? He's not in power. So the cameras will not follow him. The cameras will follow Boris. Boris has to make the announcement, not David Cameron. Guess what? In a few years' time, Boris will be gone. And the cameras will move from him to somebody else. In the same way, as I stand here, the grace is God's camera. It's on me. I shouldn't think I'm more important than anybody here. God is the only important one. And so, if the grace comes upon me and I begin to play, at that moment, there's grace upon me. And I have to do it as someone who is a steward of the... Can you imagine? I am a steward of the grace of God. I it has been given to me. Grace can be given to you to distribute it. Shout hallelujah. Stewards of grace. Anything you can do for God, you have just been entrusted. Because you are steward. Anytime you get a chance to do anything for God in his house, remember, you are a steward. But what is even strange it's, it's not for you. You never worked for it. 
You just made yourself available. And he chose that I will use you. And he decides to use you. And then the using because it's grace. Grace actually, ah, this definition, I've been giving it every now, but people don't listen to it because there's another definition that has overtaken our generation, which is unmerited favor. It's, a, it's cheap, it's cheap, it's good, but it's cheap definition of grace. The real definition of grace is God at work. Wow. Oh, I know you didn't get that. It's actually God. At work. So if the grace has been given to me, that means God has chosen to work through me. Now, if God is working through me, how can I take the credit? So, this is how God works. You are sitting somewhere. You never even plan that he, you, he will use you. He chooses to use you. And after you, he calls you, come, I'll do something through you. When you come, he doesn't let you do it. He does it through you. Because, oh, everybody who does anything for God genuinely, when you finish, people are saying, wow, wow. But you're wondering, oh, God, have mercy on me. Because I know really this is not me. No. If, if you know it's you, it wasn't God. And that's not grace. That's what eventually leads to disgrace. So, God does it through you. And then after he calls you, he plants it, calls you, does it through you when he finishes, then he rewards you. That's El Shaddai. That's El Shaddai. Why don't you clap for El Shaddai? <laughs> so, he said, Kadama Shahadahaya. He said, therefore, you see a therefore, you have to think. Based on the things I've told you about how you should serve God, how you should do that, you should go through that. He said, therefore, cast, submit yourself one to another. Humble yourself. And he uses the word, watch this, this is interesting, I'm about to make, he said, he said, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. I don't understand that phrase or that statement because if the hand is mighty, I don't, it will it subdue me. <laughs> Do you just, uh, I, someone is drowning, they put you in water and they say, they said, just stop breathing. No, you continue breathing. You will die anyway because you can't breathe underwater. But he said, they under, he said, so that means that the mighty hand of God yeah. is mighty, but you can, you can also have your own way under the mighty hand of God. It's mighty, but his might kicks, in play, kicks into effect when you allow him. So instead of asking, why am I going through this? Why, why can't I stop? I can't stop this line. Why can't? You have chosen not to stop, that's why. Why can't I stop all these things I've been doing? <laughs> you, you stop it. You can stop it. Because the way to stop it is you humble. It's an intentional pro programming. Do it. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. And as soon as you do that, can you imagine? Oh, he said, where should you humble yourself? Where? Where? Guys, you are too good. You got what I wanted to say. You got it already. Where? Under. under means you are going down. Go down. And he said, as soon as you go down under his hands, his hands rather lift you up. You are under the hand, but the hand is lifting you. Oh, don't go on top of the hand. Go under it. It will raise you. It will raise you. God raises people. He picks. Uh oh. God picks. So until you go under for him to pick you. He can't lift you. You come and stand here, he's, you're actually going to slide down. Humble yourself, boy! Ah, oh, this just getting. You are proud. I submit to you with audacity that you are proud. Anyone who tells you he's humble, that's the clearest definition of pride. That's what I mean, you know I'm, I'm, I'm humble. That's what I mean, I'm humble. You are forgiving somebody. Why do you go around telling everybody, I've forgiven him? I've forgiven him. You actually haven't forgiven them. You know what you did against me? I didn't like it. But I've forgiven you. And because I've you haven't forgiven them. What 
does it mean to humble? Humble means not to make yourself less than you are. Actually, let me put it in a very raw way. It's not to think about yourself. Don't think about yourself. Don't put yourself in the center. And let God have his way. Amen. Most of us, you know when God is, some of you, you know God is talking to you. You know it. I know you, you, you yeah, keep your, your, your face straight because no one knows that you are the one. But you know God is talking to you. You know God is talking to you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. God is talking to you. But, no. 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 You know right now, as I'm preaching, you know you have to go and break that relationship. Yeah. You came here because you are following somebody to hear. To, it's not God you're looking for. It's not, but you see, God, God has been looking for you, so he allowed the girl for you to look at her ties to follow her here because he's been looking at you. God is looking at you. You are looking at ties, but God is, oh, I feel like preaching. <laughs> hey! Hey! <laughs> you say, hey, I'm going to church. Oh, okay, I'll come. It's because, not because you want God. You followed somebody to church because you kept your eye on her, on him, but you didn't know God allowed that because God's been looking for you. As soon as you got here, God said, I see you, baby. <laughs> 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 but you don't want to humble yourself. That is the problem. It's not that God can help, but someone is too proud. Amen. Satan will use all kinds of things to distract you. So you're full of pride, you can't humble yourself. But the Bible said, humble yourself. Under, come under, come under, come under, come under, come under. When we talk about the mighty hand of God, that's what we mean. That's it. It's not about laying on of hands. Pastor's hand is not the hand of God. Thank God for lockdown. Thank God for social distancing. Those who have built their Christianity about, uh, on deliverance and laying on of hands. There's nothing that delivers more quickly and more powerfully like the word of God. If you don't like the word, you don't like your destiny. You walk away from the word, you walk away from your destiny. You walk away from the word, you walk away from his help. God does nothing without his word. Everything came to be by his word. So we need to, all of us, you can be already a Christian, and, but you know when people start backsliding, the first sign of backsliding is pride. What do I mean? Oh, but he's still praying. No, but he's not subject to God's word. He's subject to their feelings. This hand, if you ask for me, ask for me, please, please. We are not interested in who you think or what you think. We are all, in, even not what I think. What I think is not necessary. What his mighty hand says is important. So anytime someone tries to preach and is not saying what the Bible is saying clearly, throw it away. You have permission to throw it away. It's useless for your spiritual development. He said, I'm, oh, oh, thank you, Jesus, for your word. There's something about God's word. Wow. How can you be a Christian and the word doesn't get you? He said, son, you are not of God. I, I, I put it to you, you are not of God. If you're of God, there's something about the word. It, 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 levels, it grabs you. He says that, how and he will lift you up because Satan will find a way to be so be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, he was so clear. He said, Your adversary, so you don't get it wrong to think that it's your neighbor. He said, No, it's not your neighbor, your actual enemy is the devil. The devil is using what your weak point is. 
When I, before as I sat down, I was getting ready to come. God dropped this song in my heart. But there's a song. He said, guide me, O thou great Jehovah. Pilgrim through this barren land. I am weak. But you are mighty. Guide me, Lord. Hold me with your powerful hand. That should be your song. I am weak. But thou art mighty. How many of you sometimes feel you are weak? How many of you sometimes feel you are weak? You are weak. It's all of us. We are not strong enough. Listen, the demands, the demands of greatness, the demands of righteousness, the demands of elevation, we are not strong enough to meet the demands. We are not strong. Some of you don't feel rubbish. Don't feel rubbish. Don't feel rubbish. Because there's somebody sitting here who is weaker than you. Don't feel rubbish. But just humble yourself. Don't rubbish yourself. I try. I don't know why I keep doing this, this gambling thing. I don't know why. This, this masturbation is killing me. Oh. And you feel so useless. When you look at your other friend you came to church together with, they've gone far ahead and look at you. You are trailing behind. And sometimes you feel this thing is not working. Don't rubbish yourself. The problem is you are not humble. But your weakness is not a problem. It's your how humble you are willing to go. That is where the problem is. Because, listen, we are all weak. We are all weak. What did I say? The one sitting near you who looks like an angel might even have a stronger weakness than you. But you know what I saw in the Bible? He said that God's strength is made perfect in weakness. His strength. You want to see how God is strong? Show him your weakness. Humble yourself. His strength is made perfect in weakness. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Watch this, verse 10. Verse 9 says that by grace, say grace. I feel like preaching. Say grace. He said, My grace is enough. You don't need the backing of people. My grace, they don't like you. Don't worry. My grace is enough. You don't need Superman status. My grace is enough. You don't need to remember quotations. My grace is enough. You don't need to be a mighty prayer warrior. Five hours of praying. My grace is enough. If you have the grace, it's enough. It's enough. My grace! Not pastor's grace. God, that pastor never has grace. What's grace? My grace, allow me to work. You'll be okay. But humble yourself. Say, my grace is enough. And my strength is made perfect. How? When I am weak, that's when I can actually see how strong God is on my behalf. And my strength is made perfect in weakness. What? Paul said, therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast. I will hide. He didn't say I will flaunt it. But I'm not afraid of my weakness. But all I know, I know what to do. How do you handle your weakness? Humble yourself. Therefore, I'm not ashamed of the weakness. I don't like it. But I won't rubbish myself. I won't rubbish myself. Because I know I'm coming out of it. I know I'm coming out of it. I know I'm coming out of it. Somebody's coming out of Egypt. Somebody's coming out of that weakness. Somebody's coming out of it. You are coming out of the weakness. In Jesus' name. Thank you for listening to this message by David Entry. When God speaks, works show. And the works will surely show in your life. To hear more from David Entry, follow him on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, and subscribe to Caris Church on YouTube. Don't forget to share and subscribe to our podcast so you're always up to date. Be blessed.